Hi, I'm Val Hart in San Antonio, Texas, founder of Val Hart and Friends at ValHart.com. Welcome to The Real Dr. Doolittle Show, the show for animals and the people who love them. I've been called a real-life Dr. Doolittle many times in my career as an expert animal communicator, behaviorist, pet psychic, and master healer. My mission and passion is to improve the lives of animals the world over by helping humans learn how to speak their language, how to understand their viewpoints, and heal. After all, our love of animals helps us be better humans, and the more balanced and healthy we are, the more balanced and healthy they can be, too. Be sure and look for my CDs on iTunes, and to find out more about my work and to receive your free Quick Start Animal Talk course, just go to my website at valheart.com. While you're there for a limited time, you can also apply for a complimentary Happy Animal Assessment Session. And if you want to learn how to be your own Dr. Doolittle, check out the world's first complete Animal Communication Made Easy system available now on my website at valhart.com. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Val Hart, the real Dr. Doolittle, and today I'm talking with Gail Pruitt. Gail has been a nutritionist and a, and a chef for 15 years. She conducts nutritional research where at present she's focusing on human and canine nutrition with a specialty in digestive issues and disorders, and she also acts as a guest lecturer. Gail was executive chef for McNutt Oil, a gourmet cooking oil company. She's worked as a personal chef, and she's owned and operated Fine Food Delivered, preparing and delivering unique meals for those with special dietary needs. Gail has also co-hosted a nationally syndicated radio talk show, Menu for Life radio show, with Dr. Ross Stewart, a behavioral psychologist and a recognized expert on the link between nutrition and brain chemistry. Gail's recipes have appeared in national magazines and in best-selling cookbooks, such as Hampton's Diet Cookbook and Seven Color Cuisine, a cookbook and nutrition guide. She was a food writer for a Dallas-based magazine, Lifestyle Solutions. And today, what we're here to talk to Gail about is she has a great book called The Doggone Good Cookbook for Dogs and the People Who Love Them. It's published by St. Martin's Press, and it's scheduled for release in February of 2000. 13. Welcome to the show, Gail. I'm so glad to talk to you. Oh, it's so good to be here, Val. I really appreciate you asking me. You're welcome. Uh, Before we go any farther, I think let's tell people how to find out more about you and your work. So your website is doggonegood.com. I'm sorry, tell tell me what your website is. (laughs) Doggonegoodblog.com. There we go, doggonegoodblog.com. Dot com. Great. I want to just, if you want to just Google me, it's Gail Pruitt at Doggone Good, and you can get that as well. And the Gail is G A Y L E. So, excellent. Thank you. Uh-huh. That will help. So, if anybody is at their computer, they can start looking that up. All right. So, I'm so excited to talk to you. What inspired you after doing all the cooking for people? What inspired you to go and create a Doggone Good cookbook, one for dogs? Well, you know, it's kind of almost sad, to tell you the truth. <laughs> really, I didn't have anybody to cook for, and I oh. absolutely <laughs> love to cook. And I oh, like my gosh. To cook people. And, uh, you know, there just really wasn't anybody for me to cook for on a daily basis, and I looked at these two little cute dogs that I have. They're okay. devious mutts, and I said, well, you know what? I can cook for them. <laughs> uh, I started doing that, and not only did they lose weight and got healthier, but so did I. Uh, wow. I started doing a lot of research on canine nutrition as well, because that's what I do for a living is, is nutritional research. So I thought, I'll just do canine nutrition too. Mm. So I did that, and, geez, their their coats got shiny. Their mm. little bodies were, were very svelte, and, and they're muscly, and their eyes would sparkle, and they were really... A lot more mischievous, by the Uh-oh. way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the good news and the bad news about having healthy animals. <laughs> I, know what, I bet I could write about this. <laughs> but you could, too. Uh, well, and so it's interesting you mentioned your two dogs, your two puppies. So I believe you have Mr. Casper, a furry gourmand, and Chef Mimi Pruitt, right? Chef Mimi? Chef Mimi, uh 
she has got a whole backstory. But but basically, she was a little street dog. Ah. And uh, she lived on the streets of Dallas, and uh, they couldn't catch her for almost two months. Wow. So she's fast. She's a thief. She still <laughs> is. <laughs> but uh, she's very smart and very wily. And mm-hmm. she has a uh, exotic palette. Let me let me tell you that. Oh my goodness! Very exotic. But anyway, she she helps me with the recipes, and uh, uh-huh. Mr. Casper is our food critic. <laughs> He's a food critic. He lets us <laughs> exactly if it's good or if it's not. Interesting. So he is uh, he's he's quite the uh, he's quite the gourmand. That is awesome. I love it. So does Chef Mimi like stuff that Casper does not? Of course. Uh, Of course. Everything. (laughs) It's her heart. Uh She loves it all. Oh, I love that. So she has a great tolerance and a a large palate, and he is more particular. Particular. We have to be very (laughs) careful with the hornets outside because they disappear. Oh. Yeah. She evidently she lived on the street, mm. and she learned to be very flexible with her food mm-hmm. and her protein. Yeah, and so she did whatever it took to survive. Yeah, but I will tell you, when I first got Mimi, she was um, her digestive issues were were terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to, you know, with with diarrhea and and vomiting. I had to literally pull up all my carpet because it was all ruined. Mm. So now I have wood floors. <laughs> oh, wow. But because of Mimi, but I knew that Mimi needed some really good nutrition and she needed to be able to digest it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. however, Casper has no issue <laughs> at all. Okay. He's or no excuse he, anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he <laughs> can do whatever he pleases and he's fine. I love it. I love it. So I'm curious, I I know a lot of what you're uh, working with uh, can even be vegetarian. Like, uh, is there research on canines eating vegetables? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, um, according to the 2005 Purdue Cancer Center uh, Center studies, Mm -hmm. there was a study that, this is really, really interesting because they only did one study on vegetables with dogs that I could find. Mm -hmm. And it was on bladder cancer. Oh. But what they found was that if a dog or a a canine ate three to four servings of a yellow-orange vegetable, it reduced the risk of bladder cancer 70%. Wow. 70%. Can you believe that? I mean, and then they haven't done any other studies, so you can imagine what it would do for other other cancers or other health issues. Wow. So green, yellow, orange vegetables are so important. Uh, wow. They don't have to do a lot of it. But yeah. small amounts really, really do help. And, and in a little bit, I'll be able to tell you guys about how to um, puree some of these that your dog was going to love, number one, and it's really, really healthy. And you can just add it a little bit to his food uh, oh. whenever. Oh, wow. Can... Oh, I love that. So... So are you doing, uh, you're doing cooked, raw, vegetarian food? Um, are you also, you're also doing the more traditional protein or meat, um, meat and vegetable and whatever kinds of foods? Tell us more about what you're working with there. Um, my dogs normally like raw food, and they get about 75% protein. Mm-hmm. And the rest is, um, is, is vegetables. They don't get any grains at all. Okay. Uh, now, when I say no grains, they do occasionally have uh, quinoa or okay. millet, but that is not really a grain. Those are seeds. Okay, you're, you're right. Mm-hmm. But I will tell you that you have to puree those vegetables because uh, dogs have a very short digestive system, mm-hmm. and they're, they don't have amylase in their, their mouth like we do. Mm. And they don't chew like we do. They, right. uh, they have canines. They rip and they crush. Rip, but crush, and inhale. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. In fact, within Got it. seconds, it's gone. <laughs> mm, or I should say vacuum. Uh, yes, like a vacuum. Yeah. But yeah. but you have, so if you puree these vegetables, they're going to get the antioxidants, they're going to get the nutrients from it, 
and it's going to help it. Uh, it gives it a really good chance to um, digest and, and be able to uh, use or utilize these mm-hmm. nutrients. Well, and I've, I've been told that it breaks down the, the membranes, the cellular membranes, so that uh-huh. the nutrients are accessible, they're assimilatable, you know, they're exactly. easier exactly. to digest. Mm-hmm. Good. And so, that so this is chance. really important for the dogs. Um, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people say, well, I just give my dogs um, green beans mm-hmm. out of a can. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, you know, you do need to cook the green beans. You really do. If you're going to give, but you won't, you don't really need to cook them more than, than five minutes. Mm. But then you really need to puree them. Okay. So they, before they is, really get in Is that there. true for all vegetables? Well, no, like sweet potatoes. If you cook a sweet potato, they mm-hmm. can just eat that. Yeah, okay. You can also, what you can do, Val, is, uh, you know, for chewies, you can dehydrate. You can uh, cut your uh, sweet potato thinly and put it in the oven and dehydrate it until it gets like leather. Mm-hmm. And it's great for them to chew on. Oh, that's excellent. Much better than that nasty rawhide stuff or greenies or whatever they are, right? Yeah, with lots of gluten and things like with, that. With gluten and preservatives and dyes right. and colorings. And you no, know, and another really good thing for them to do is, um, well, I forgot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so with that one out. Okay. Um, but they do also get chicken necks to chew on. Yes, okay. All right. And mm-hmm. another thing that I do that's really different that I haven't found anybody else ever doing and that's I make them gelatin. Gelatin? Yeah. Gelatin. Jello for doggies? I make gelatin for doggies. Oh, and, I love that. Um, okay. What they do is it um, it has all the collagen in it that they mm-hmm. need. Yeah. It's got um, uh, chondroitin, um, glucosamine chondroitin, naturally. Oh. It has prolon in it, naturally. So it helps with the joints. Uh-huh. It does all kinds of things. It's, and it's it's really increases the immune system. And another thing that it does, especially in these hot Texas time, mm-hmm. is when the dogs have been out, you can give them uh, gelatin when they get in, and it mm-hmm. really helps um, hydrate them. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, can it's you... really great for that. And you can put all different kinds of vegetables. And I make, I make it with a, a beef, a bony beef broth. Okay which is really a simple thing to do, by the way, is just save all your carcasses. Mm -hmm. Like if you cook a chicken, um, cook the chicken, clean it up, clean the carcass off, put the carcass in a uh, plastic bag and freeze it. Okay. If you have a steak that has bone in it, do it Mm -hmm. the same thing or a roast. Either Mm -hmm. way, put Mm -hmm. it in there. And then what you do is you get a great big pot of water and you put your bones in there your frozen bones, and put apple cider vinegar, about three to four tablespoons, and put it in the refrigerator and let it sit for three hours up to overnight. And what that's going to do is that's going to leach out all of the good minerals that are in those bones. Okay. And then you cook that uh, for three min- uh, for three hours, at least three hours. You take the bones out, throw them away because they're gone now. Okay. Use that broth for the gelatin. Wow. And so, and you can, like you said, you can put some veggies in it. Well, um, what I do with the veggies is I get all of the, the good veggies that I want them to have. And I do different ones and a lot of sea vegetables, too, with that. Mm-hmm. And I puree those and put put them put some ice in there, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I put four to five envelopes, sometimes up to seven envelopes, to a quart of liquid. Okay. Of, of gelatin. Okay, uh, envelopes of gelatin, and you put that in that that cold um, vegetable puree. Uh huh. Then you let that get in there until it's totally solid. Then you put it in the hot broth. Okay. Okay. And then you stir the, that until it totally dissolves. You put it in a glass container, and I like a, a big, you know, um, corningware, corningware, mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. glass container, or um, and and. Okay, you're going to have to uh, edit this. <laughs> oh, you're doing great. I love this. I'm making notes as fast as I can write. I love it. Keep going. A ceramic dish. There you go. There uh, you go. Large, wide one. And put it in there. Put it in the refrigerator. The dogs are going to go crazy for it. All oh, I wow. have to do is say, jello. <laughs> and a while. 
I had to say that slowly, you know, really low because <laughs> mine are right here in front of me. And <laughs> that is their biggest treat, and they well, love it, and it's so healthy and so good awesome. for them. The, so it makes like jigglers, kind of a yeah. You know, uh, I used to started out with making uh, green stars and uh, red wiggly <laughs> beef hearts. <laughs> And where I said, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cut them like that. I'm just gonna make them in little squares. These dogs don't care anyway. They don't care what shape it is. Yeah, exactly. So, as long as it's in my mouth, Mom. That's all I really care about. Exactly. And Mr. Casper becomes Mr. Hoppy when I'm giving <laughs> gelatin. So oh, I love that. I've written it down. I'm gonna tr- do that for Einstein. This just sounds wonderful. Oh, I love it. I've even got bones. I'm gonna go do it as soon as we hang up. Okay. Cool. Thank you're, you. You're keeping so, all the bones, and uh, you're not wasting anything. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, um, so that's with bones, and you know, um, let's talk about vegan dogs. So, what what do you think about vegan dogs, and, and how did you come up with the concept of doing vegan? Well, because there's all kinds of people out there that rescue animals. Yeah. And everybody has a different philosophy. Right. And so, you know, I want people to rescue animals. I don't care, you know, what their belief is. Mm-hmm. I personally think that animals need protein, I yeah. mean, especially canines. Yeah. However, if they're not going to give them uh, animal protein, then they yeah. need to know how to get the most out of the vegetables that they use. Okay. So that's why we go vegan. There's there's a section in the book uh, about vegan, and okay. explains you know what you absolutely have to do to make sure that it's as balanced as possible for for yeah. these dogs. Yeah. And they're going to have to have L-carnitine and taurine because if right. they don't get that, and the only way you normally get that is from animal products. Right. But if they don't have that, it really affects their heart. So. Okay. Um, there is a way that you can go and get a artificial L-carnitine and taurine, which are good, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, but make sure that it is the good human pharmaceutical grade. You can Google that. I don't sell it or anything like that, but I think you can find it. Make sure it's really the good stuff because okay. some of the uh, cheaper ones are very dangerous. Ah, uh, Thanks for pointing that out. It's really important for a vegan uh, animal. Yeah. Uh, not only dogs but cats because they mm-hmm. really need that taurine. Okay. Well, and I think that's also true for the vegans themselves. You know, oh, the yes. People as well. So, yeah, it, it, that's a really good point. And so do you think that animals do as well when they're following, like, uh, your protocol? Uh, they do as well on a vegan diet, or do you think they always miss meat or, or need it? I, I Well, this is my personal belief that an animal is designed um, – Canines are designed to eat meat yeah, and protein, animal yeah. protein. Okay. They're not designed for vegetables. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't have uh, amylase in their mouth mm-hmm. it, like we do. And that mm-hmm. starts breaking down, you know, the, the, the carbohydrates. And, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. um, it, it's hard for them to digest uh, beans and lentils and things like that. Now, lentils, you know, you can over – Overcook, and that's what I'm going to suggest right now is okay. is when you do rice, which you have to have. I mean, if you're going to do vegan, you're going to have to have rice. You're going to mm-hmm. have to have certain types of legumes. Uh, you're going to need, um, uh, and, and also brown rice because that's where it's got all the B vitamins in there as well. Mm-hmm. But you're also going to need like quinoa and millet. So my my, I'm telling you that it's really important for them to be able to digest it to add more water to it than it calls for and cook it for 15 to 20 minutes longer. Mm, okay. And then puree it. Okay. That way, because now quinoa has 20% more protein than most any other type of grain, only this is oh. not a grain, it's a seed, it's but a it seed, has yeah. more protein than even millet. And millet is very good, by the way. Okay. So if you do that um, and use all the really good, um, you're going to have to supplement if you're going to do vegan. That's all mm-hmm. there is to it. You're going to have mm-hmm. to find a good multiple vitamin and mineral supplement. Okay, interesting. Well, I think it's so fascinating that, you know, instead of arguing with people <laughs> about their beliefs, which is a losing battle, you know, it's like they believe what they they choose to believe. 
And what you've done is done the research and experimented and explored in this and given them really good guidelines and assistance um, to, to still have a good, healthy animal and, and, and honor their beliefs. Uh, which well, I and think that's is true. Really important. And, now, of yeah. course, probably everyone's heard the story of, of Bramble, uh, the oldest living dog, supposedly was a vegetarian. Really? Wow. Yes. Okay. Uh, lived for 27 years. Wow. And um, he was very healthy, and that's that's the story. Um, and I do believe that story. I don't uh-huh. necessarily believe that he was totally vegan all of that time. Um, okay. But, uh, you know, it's just like anything else. You know, there's there's everybody's body is different, and, and animals' bodies are different, too. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, some some animals can handle things easier than others. Right. Yeah, um, I'm thinking for some breeds, they may be more able to do this exactly. uh, more easily, and other breeds would not thrive on it at all. You know, they, uh, yes, that's what I'm saying. But not uh, yeah. breeds, okay. but individual dogs. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So, and another thing is, it, uh, to me, it's really, really important to get your animal some good enzymes. Yes. And you can only really find the good ones at your vet. You know, they have some really great ones. They're a little expensive, but they'll last a long, long time. Mm, okay. And it's uh, they need to have those to break that food down, even if they're doing commercial dog food. Because mm, okay. most commercial dog foods have corn in it. Oh, they yeah. have different kinds of grains. Mm-hmm. And they need to be able to break that down and utilize it. That's a really good point. Yep. Interesting. Thanks. Okay, so um, do you have any other easy, simple things to, that we can help? Like, let's say, I mean, I know everybody isn't going to be able to cook for their dog consistently for, for their whole life. Uh, sometimes we fall back on a can, you know, or some kibble, or and some people may not be able to even cook at all uh, or, or very little. What would you recommend for them? Well, uh, if you know, if they get some really good commercial dog food, I'm going to suggest if they do, get the canned if at all possible. Okay. And the reason for that is because there's liquid in there. Right. And the kibbles, they cook it so long that there's really very little nutrition left in there. Yeah. And it's dry, and it doesn't really have any flavor or taste. Yeah. And they have to add nutrients in there just so the dogs can have some kind of nutrient. And these are even some of the best ones. And what they do to get the dogs to eat it is they, they spray it with these fat meat smells. Uh-huh. Or they yeah. would never eat it in the first place. Right. So um, I would suggest that you get the real, the real meat, you know, um, make sure that it's a good quality um, company. That, mm-hmm. that you feel comfortable with the source they use. Okay. Um, but but saying that, if you do have the kibbles, okay, mm-hmm. I would I would suggest that I have I've got uh, I've made some sauces up that I think are good for all dogs and all oh. dogs too. By the way, and by the way, you can do all the sauces. You can make those into gelatins too if you want. Oh, or oh even that's great. Yeah. Pickles for um, the um, uh, you know really hot uh, summer. Mm-hmm. They love to lick on those. Yeah, it's really great. But I like that. Is you take different kinds of vegetables. Now there are certain vegetables that you do not want your dog to have, oh. and those are like onions, and you don't really want too many garl. You don't want too much garlic. You don't mm-hmm. want uh, macadamia nut oil. By the way, I was the the executive chef for for Mac Nut Oil, uh-huh. but. You, 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 they can't. It's deadly for them, so you okay. can't have that. Coconut oil, by the way, is fantastic for them. Okay. All right. So that's really great. But let's get back to the sauces. Okay. The sauces I use like, um, like yellow squash in the summer. You know the crookneck yellow squash. Yeah. And then I get a yellow bell pepper. I get a little turmeric, which is yellow, by the way, mm-hmm. and that's very anti-inflammatory. Okay. And maybe even a little uh, ginger, not very much. You don't need very much of any of those kind of things because um, it doesn't take much. Right. And you put that in uh, in a um, food processor. I, I, I use my food processor on a daily basis. 
uh-huh. and you can get them very inexpensively. So, you know, to invest in a food processor is really worth it. Yeah. So I put these in a food processor with just good filtered water, or if I've made my, my chicken broth with no onions or my beef broth with no onions, I put that in there too, but you mm-hmm. don't have to. Okay. Just pure with water, puree it, and then add, I, I freeze them in individual um, bags and put them in okay. the freezer. Okay. And then I take them out the night before, and I just put a little spoonful in their food. And you don't okay. want to give any any dog too much of anything to start out with. Right. Because it just kind of messes up their little digestive system. They're not used to um, uh, nutrient-dense food. Yeah, that would be nutrient-dense, all right. Yeah, it's nutrient-dense. Mm-hmm. So, But you could do that with a little bit of asparagus, with broccoli, uh, with uh, spinach. Um, you can use that a lot. Of, even romaine lettuce, by the way, is excellent. It's got high... Uh, beta carotene, it's got the chlorophyll, it's got all the good stuff in it, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's really good too. And I use that a lot in my um, in my bulk uh, dog food. Wow. That makes great sense. I like the thought too of doing it by color. So, you know, yellow squash, yellow bell pepper, turmeric, a bit of ginger, that sort of thing. It's, it's, I could just see that. It's like this really wonderful pop of yellow. And then we've got the green, asparagus, broccoli, spinach, romaine right. lettuce. And um, you can do that with red as well. Yeah. And cool. uh, actually, even the, the pigment in, these, in, in, the, in the color, the, the actual pigment, that has a particular task that it does in the body. Every single hue of the color. Wow. And, you know, everybody's heard of beta carotene. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. You've heard of beta Are you there? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I hear you. Okay, beta carotene. Um, you know, you get that from sweet potato. You get that from any kind of orange, yellowy vegetable, right? Right. Mm-hmm. However, did you know there's over 600 different carotenes in uh, different hues, anywhere from yellow all the way up to a certain type of red? Wow. And there's over 600, and each one of those is a different, and it does something different in the body, and it helps dogs, too, by the mm. way. Wow. By the way, they love cranberries. Okay. Now, you don't want to put just a whole bunch of cranberries, but a small amount of fresh organic cam- cranberries or frozen cranberries mm-hmm. is wonderful for them. It's great for their uh, bladder. If they have, like, crystals or anything like that that causes right. issues, it's wonderful. And by the way, all of these things that I'm talking about adds more liquid. And the more liquid that a dog has, the easier it is on the bladder. Uh-huh. Right. Right. Wow. Uh, what, um, so real quick, what else would you put in a red, um, in a red sauce? I, well, I, use, I use bell pepper, red bell pepper. Okay, so red bells. Mm-hmm. I use a tomato. Now, you have to be kind of careful because tomatoes you don't want... You don't want their stems or leaves in a tomato. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't. But you a mean little the, bit inside? Of their, huh? the inside? The inside of it with the, the seeds? That's fine. Okay, that part's fine, but you mean the out, the external stems and stuff. Yes, gotcha. Okay. That, you know, because that can actually cause heart murmurs. Oh, wow. So, But anyway, uh, I put a little bit of that in there, and you can do, um, I even put a little bit of radish in there. Red okay. radish, not much, just a little tiny bit, because uh-huh. you don't want to give them too many cruciferous vegetables at one time because it could cause gas, and we don't want that. No. But a little bit is fine. And also, it really protects them against a lot of uh, pl- pollutants, you know, in the air and also in the grass. Mm-hmm. You know, what we don't realize is that animals are very close to the ground. Right. And they're walking on the street. They're getting yeah. in puddles. They're uh, going on the grass that's been uh, sprayed. Yeah. And we usually don't um, wash them more than once or twice a week. Now, I do mine more than that, but mm-hmm. but okay. most people don't, and they might okay. not even get once a week. Yeah. So they've got these toxins on their body. And, you know, we have to – that's why we want to do as many of the really good – vegetables as possible to keep the toxins as low as possible, to a minimal. That's why another thing that I really recommend, organic if at all possible. Yeah, yeah. 
Whew, this is a wealth of information. I can't wait to see your book. Oh, <laughs> this is great. Uh, so let's see. Um, I have uh, here's another question. Why is it important for canines to have organic fruits and vegetables and grass-fed meats in their diet? Well, now I just went over why it would be really good to have organic is to keep the um, the toxins to a minimal. Right. So that's that's it a has, great reason. Mm-hmm. It, it is more nutrient dense. I don't really care what the study said that came out <laughs> just this week, but uh, organic vegetables taste better. Mm-hmm. And if they taste better, I know they have more nutrients in it. I mean, yeah. they're, it's richer, it's fuller, it's, it's a better color, you know. So you know that there is really a lot more nutrients in there. As far as grass-fed meat and pasture-fed eggs, you get the uh, omega-3 fatty acids that you're not going to get from grain-fed meat. Mm. Okay. Okay. Plus, if you get the grass-fed, most likely they're not, they don't have antibiotics and they don't have hormones in them. Uh-huh. Okay? Yep. So yep. you don't want that either. Right. Um, the, the eggs, number one, they're fabulous. If you will get the pasture-fed eggs, let me tell you, I know they're a little bit more expensive than the regular eggs. They mm-hmm. cost probably 5 maybe even up to $6 per dozen. But think about that. That is 12 protein sources. Yeah. That's very inexpensive to get yeah. the very best. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I have to say, when I first started playing with the the better quality eggs, the organic eggs from hopefully happier chickens, <laughs> we won't go there, but um, if when you compare a regular commercial egg, you know, the, the typical egg versus mm-hmm. one of the others, and, you know, you uh, go to crack the the shell, I mean, yeah. if you can't tell the difference, <laughs> if you did a, did, did a little research experiment of, of your own, if uh-huh. you couldn't tell the difference in the quality of the egg and the health and vitality of the the better the fabulous egg, you know, the the natural well, roaming, you know, and, and healthier uh, chickens versus the other one. I mean, it, when you do that experiment, it's really hard to eat regular or even work with or buy the regular ones. It's not, a, it's not a question anymore. It's like you, you don't want that nasty. You know, if you open, if you get a regular one from the regular grocery store and you just crack it open and put it there, it's going to be a lemony, pale little yolk. It yeah. doesn't stand up, by the way. It's no, it doesn't. Flat or no. flatter. No. You get one that has been uh, pasture fed, that's been out in the out in the garden eating mm-hmm. all kinds of seeds and worms and good stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yummy. Mm -hmm. then it's going to be a bright orange, and it's going to stand way up. That means that all those minerals are in there. You know, that's what's so good for you. And it's got all the omega-3 fatty acids. It's got the Mm. cysteine. It's got got all the good stuff in there. uh, And let me tell you, dogs can really tell the difference. My dogs get at least three eggs, those kind of eggs, each a week. Wow. And uh, it's, it's really very important for them. But wow. you can really tell a difference. Wow, I love that. Uh, what do you do with the shell? Uh, are you do you uh, use I'm the so shell? I'm so glad you asked that question. I keep the shell, and keep I it. wash it out really well, and I let it dry. Okay. Uh huh. And after I get about twelve of them, uh huh, in my um, my blender, and I I get it down to a fine powder. Or you can actually use a um, coffee grinder. Now don't oh. use don't use the, that for real coffee after you use this. But you can puree it down to a super powder. Now, one teaspoon of that is about 1,000 milligrams of calcium. Wow. Okay? Not only that, but it has hyaluronic acid in it. Oh, okay. Now, hyaluronic acid is great for the joints, but it also has about 27 other minerals in there. Wow. Dogs really need, and actually you do too, and it's easier for your body to actually assimilate calcium from a good eggshell, but wow. you want to get you want to get the really good eggs with all the minerals in it right. to be able to do that. Plus, right. yeah, you know you're not wasting anything. You're using right. you're you're utilizing everything that you have. Mm. Oh, this is fun. Good. I, I love that. I've wondered about that, um, and I've been told you can just give them the actual shell. You can just kind of crush it up and hand it to them. <laughs> Um, and Einstein will well he'll he'll eat some of it, and usually I find little shell little bits of the shell all over the place. Right, <laughs> so. but you know, 
do it in the little power. That's so much easier. That's a lot. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Yeah. A little extra effort. Yeah, but not so bad. Really, you can make a whole, you can do 12 at a time, and that's that's huge amount. Put yeah. it in a plastic bag and put it in the refrigerator. And okay. just if you're making your bulk food or if you're just doing um, a little bit, you can just take a little pinch and put it in there for dog food. Okay. Because they need more calcium than we do. Ah. Uh. I love that. Good. That makes a lot of sense. We could even put a bit of it in our jello. Okay. Yum. So, um, so do you have a plan for people that just don't think they have time to prepare homemade food for their dogs? Well, yeah, and that was what I was uh, suggesting about the the sauces, the different sauces. Okay. That if they used a uh, kibble, then they yeah. can spoon a little bit of that other just to get a little bit more nutrition in there, and and um, a lot of antioxidants that they wouldn't normally get. And all right. they have to do is just get the vegetables, chop it up, put it in the food processor, and blend it with some water. That's all well, they that's, have to do. That's simple. That is yeah, really, really simple. So, so I don't want to hear any excuses. <laughs> so you can get the vegetables and put them in the blender and puree them and, and put them on your kibble or your canned food. That's correct. And I love it. Try to get canned food, if at all possible, yeah. Uh, I know a lot of people say, well, I, I just it's just too, me- too too messy and I don't like that. It smells right. bad. Well, right. okay, and I understand that. Uh, truly, I do understand that. Yeah. But just remember that the kibble doesn't have the nutrient value that an a- actual canned dog food would have. Mm-hmm. Right. Not okay. even close. Keep it in mind. Not even close. Yeah, yeah. You know, we look at the label and we think that, all of that is viable and fresh, and I mean, it's like we trick ourselves into believing the the promotion, the the advertisement. Um, but the truth is that after the can goes and the dry food goes through all the manufacturing process, there's really not much left. That's really there's really usable. not um, yeah hardly any left, any yeah. nutrient value at all. Right. Right. So try, and plus the, the canned dog food is pasteurized, so it's fairly sterile. Yeah, that's true, very sterile. So how would they ever get the enzymes and nutrients and probiotics and all the other good stuff that they need to be healthy? Yeah. Well, they Makes don't sense to me. canned food either. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. Are you, so are you, are you planning on doing a cat cookbook? cookbook? As a matter of fact, my, my sister-in-law was saying, Gail, we have got to do, she's a cat person, big time. Yeah. She says, we've got to do a cat book. And I said, well, okay, I really am going to have to do some research because I, I haven't done a lot of study on cats. I do know that, that cats really need, they're, they're carnivores. They are not omnivores at all. Mm-hmm. They need yeah. protein. They don't need any of the other junk that's in cat food. Yeah. So yeah. And I'll tell you something else that I do that's easy. And you might want to do it just occasionally, and that might really help the okay. nutrition boost. And that's just go occasionally and get a couple of pounds of grass-fed beef ground. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can keep that in the refrigerator for about four days. Okay. Give them a spoonful of that every once in a while. Or just instead of one of their meals, give them that. Oh, wow. Just some ground uh, you beef? Know, it's, uh, now, I would... Do it slowly. I wouldn't just all of a sudden give them a fourth of a pound of ground meat. Mm-hmm. But you could start out with doing a, a spoonful with their regular meal and then kind of build up. And it only take for, you know, two or three times where they could actually have it. And then just keep some on hand. You can actually freeze that in individual servings, mm-hmm. take it out the night before, and do that. You don't have to do it all the time, but it sure would help give them a real boost yeah. And the grass-fed yeah. meat, I mean, that has got so much nutrients in it. And then another little thing that I would do is get coconut oil. Now, okay. they they will love it, and it tastes great. Mm-hmm. It's also an antifungal. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it really will slim them down. By the way, it will slim you down, too. <laughs> it's, uh, it actually helps get rid of um, cholesterol. Oh, okay. And uh, tri- your triglycerides will come down a little bit too. So okay. it's really a wonderful product.
product to use. It's good to cook with. Another good thing about it is you can actually go up to 375 degrees with, with the coconut oil before it starts smoking, and that means breaking down. Uh-huh. Okay. So uh, with coconut oil, though, you can um, – you can do almost anything with it. It's just, it's really wonderful. You can put it on you, it's, mm-hmm. it's, and it's not greasy. Mm-hmm. I know coconut oil is also antibacterial and antiviral. Absolutely. Um, and it's an amino acid. It's a medium-chain amino acid, which it's, means it, that... It's, it's uh, MCT oil. You're right. Mm-hmm. It's a medium-chain triglyceride is what uh-huh. it is. Uh-huh. Got it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful product. So yeah. it really just kind of goes through and cleans you out. Yes, uh, it, it helps uh, helps definitely clean you out. It helps, it helps your bowels move. To be careful. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think we should give them that warning, don't you? Uh, so, uh, but a your... small amount, you know. But oh, what I was going to say was with with the heating, you can heat it up to 375. Now, remember, you cook you fry chicken at 340. Mm. So you don't really need to heat that up that oil that that much Mm -hmm. and cooking with olive oil it's the same kind of thing that olive oil is it starts breaking down at 325 that's like sauteing Mm, wow you don't want to really cook with your olive oil or especially your your good extra virgin olive oil Mm. you want to use that as a finishing oil oh okay okay and that way you're going to get all the the goodies out of it plus it tastes better and dogs like it too by the way yes yes they do fit and it's just really great now, also, while we're talking about food and, and this kind of thing, let's talk about fish. Okay. Fish is really important for them, the, the omega-3 fatty acids, the DHA, EPA. That's really important for them. It, it helps their brains. It helps mm. their focus. Uh, it helps the um, um, immune response and the inflammation response. Okay. So uh, that's really, really important. And if you don't give your dog um, fish oil, then I would suggest doing some kind of fish cooked, cooked. And that's what I'm really going to say that because you do need to cook your fish, all your fish. Okay. Uh, okay. But uh, tuna fish, you know, if it's low mercury tuna fish, uh, mm-hmm. that's great. Um, salmon in a can, that's good. And you want to probably do that at least three times a week. Okay. All right. And you can just open up the can and give it to them as long oh, as it's sodium. That's simple. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And okay. so it's it's you know it's not like you're going to have to go and fix anything. And you okay. can do that a couple of times a week. Okay. Um, it can be their whole meal for one whole meal. Wow, I love that. That's a quick and easy dinner. <laughs> oh, that sounds awesome. I love this. Ah, <sighs> okay. So it's easier to cook for our dogs than we knew. There's all kinds of wonderful, easy things that you can do to improve their diet and help them be healthier. And thank you so much for writing this book and for applying your unique specialty uh, and interests and passion to helping us have healthy dogs. I love it. Well, you know, it was really a pleasure to write it. And then I met you. Well, this is what was really interesting. I met these wonderful people at the dog park. Yeah. And they were photographers, and they uh, were one of the top photographers in Dallas. Oh. And they do food and dogs. Wow. I mean, can you believe that? Yeah, you were divinely guided there, weren't you? Absolutely. Anyway, yeah. so in the book, did you get the cover of the book? Yes. Okay, good. They did all those beautiful, beautiful photographs of dogs and food. And so it's not just a a, a, a book about nutrition and recipes it's you know you just look at that book and you smile you look at the 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 pages you look at the the photographs they did such a fabulous job and remember once you smile you're building your immune system every time you you increase your immune system and it actually brings your blood pressure down i love that Okay, so what we want people to do next is, uh, I know your book's not out quite yet as of this day. Um, It is coming out in February of 2013, so people can pre-order it, right? They can. They can go to Barnes & Noble or Amazon right now and pre-order. Okay, good. Another thing I want to just kind of mention really quickly is watch for the Doggone Good Cooking Show. Oh, cool. Old Cast TV. Okay. Um, and it'll probably be about the same time that the the book does come out. 
Okay. Awesome. Oh, that'll be fun. I really love that. I think, um, you know, and uh, I one of my shows that I like is to watch the Food Channel, you know, and uh, uh, Food Network and all of those. And I was thinking it would be awesome to have uh, uh, Cooking for Animals on there. I think you'd be a great one. I'm going to vote for you. <laughs> Thank you that the it. director for Food Channel, Cheryl Nelson, uh-huh. the one that that asked me to please do the pilot for the Dog on Good Cooking Show. Cool! Oh, woo! Oh, I'm so excited! Ah, how good to say I talked to her when this is all just getting started. This would be great. All right, everybody. So your website again is doggongoodblog.com. Yeah, yes, doggongoodblog.com. And, and the, or you can just Google Gail Pruitt Dog on Good. Okay. And uh, also okay. you can go to Facebook, uh, Dog on Goods uh, on the Facebook. Okay. Okay. Or they can uh, friend me, uh, Gail Pruitt, on the Facebook. Okay. So uh, I'm just looking forward to visiting with you more often, Val. I think yeah. it's really a lot of fun. It is fun. It's awesome. I love what you're doing. This is so cool. All right. Well, so thank you so much. Uh, we've begun, uh, Again, we've been speaking with Gail Pruitt. Uh, thanks so much for your time today, Gail, for sharing your heart with us, your passion with us, and for your love of animals. I know you're helping to make our world a better place. Well, thank you for having me. You're welcome. All right. I'll catch up with you later. Let me know what, uh, what the next big thing you're up to is. I'll do it. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for listening to the show. For more information or to listen to other podcasts, go to valhart.com forward slash blog. And if you're someone who values a non-invasive, holistic solution to resolving problems with your dogs, cats, and horses, and you want better behaved, healthier, and happier animals, just go to my website at valhart.com to apply for a complimentary happy animal assessment session. And be sure and remember to look for my CDs on iTunes. Learning how to talk with animals is fun and will change your life. So while you're there at my site, get my free Quick Start Animal Talk course and check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system. May the love of animals bless you, teach you, inspire you, heal you, and reconnect you to the circle of life.